Welcome to Practical Python Programming. In this video, we're going to take a look at the idea of using file input output to create a log tracking the state of our plug each minute it's either on or off. If you're already familiar with input output, to continue on with this project, you can skip to our next video, which will cover email notifications. Let's dive into it. So, in order to open a file in Python, we can use a built-in function called open. So to do this, we just type in open, and then open close parentheses, and that is our function. Within Jupyter Notebook, we can get a little bit of information about how this function works by typing or holding shift and then tab. Here we can see we have to pass in the file we want to open, and then the mode. If we click the plus button, we can go ahead and see a little bit more information about it. We can include some extra options, as well as what the different modes are. As we look at these quickly, we can see we have R, which is for reading, and that's the default mode. We have W, which is for writing. These are the two that we're primarily going to use within our program. You'll notice here that the W truncates the file first. What that means is when you open the file with W as the mode, it deletes everything that's in the file. We do have the option to use A as our mode, which will append it to the data that's already in the file. So depending on how you want to utilize your file input output, you may want to do A over W. For our file, like I said, we're going to use W, and we'll see why here in a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and specify what we want to open. We'll say tvlog.text. That'll be in quotes, and then we'll pass our mode also in quotes. So the first example is we'll try to open that in read. And then we'll go ahead and take the file it opens and store that connection into a variable. We'll just say my file for now. When you run that box, you'll see that we have an error. The reason being is that file does not exist. So I'm running my code in this folder right here. You'll see I do not have a file called tvlog.txt. If I decide to open that in write mode, it opens successfully. If we come back over here, we'll now see I have the file existing. The reason being is when we open it in read mode, it does not create a file for us because if it doesn't exist, there'll be nothing to read. However, in write mode, it will cre create that file for us to open. So in order to interact with it, let's go ahead and type in the name of our variable that has that connection. We'll do a period for that dot notation and then hit tab again to see what some of our options are. So if we look here, we can see that we have some reads and we have some writes. So I want to write to this file. And like any good programmer, we'll start off with writing hello world into that file. Now when I say my file.write with a string of hello world, it'll return how many characters it wrote. And then in order to be done with that file, we'll say my file dot close. Whenever you're done with the file, you want to close it. So we come back over here and now we can go ahead and open this file. And we can see hello world now exists in that file. So that's pretty cool. So now we come back here and let's try to open that file up and read that data. So what we can do is once again we'll say my file we'll overwrite the old one. We'll say open and we'll say TV log again dot txt and our mode this time will be R. When we run this we'll see that it opens successfully because the file now exists. So now what we can do is say my uh, my file dot once again we can see our options we will do read line and then we don't have to pass anything into it because we're reading a line. And then we have to save that information we read. So we'll go ahead and just say data. We run that cell. And now if we display what's stored in data, we can see we have the string hello world. Now that we've seen an example of reading and writing to a file, let's see how we can use this in our program. So ultimately what we're going to do is increase the number of minutes that our plug is tracking the TV as on every time we run our script. So to do that, we're going to use an if statement. An if statement decides whether or not we're going to execute the code associated with a condition. So for this, 
we'll go ahead and check a condition of our current power usage. So we can say if our plug dot get emitter real time and then if you want to get just a single value out of there, you can put brackets at the end and then inside of quotes, select the value you want. We'll go ahead and say power. And then we can use a comparison operator and we'll say greater than whatever we've logged as being the TV on. So my TV is currently off, so I know I'm going to get a small value for my power. I'm just going to go ahead and put 10 because that is its standby power. At the end, we put a colon to complete our if statement. Now when you hit enter, you'll notice it automatically indents for us. In Python, the concept of a code block or the code associated with this condition is specified by indenting here. Every other line that's indented will indicate it's tied together. So what we can do now is we'll go ahead and open our file and read the existing data. What we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and put a zero in there. So the current data in our file is zero. So we'll say my file equals open and we'll say TV log dot text and we initially want to open that in read mode to get the data out of the file. Okay, and then to get the data out, we can go ahead and say data equals, and we'll say my file. Go ahead and look at our options again. And we're just going to call it a single read. We don't need to read a whole line. So we'll say read. And then when we read text out of a file, we're going to get a string. We're not going to get a number. So what we can do is cast or convert that string into an integer. So inside data will be the current number that was in our file. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and close our file. So my file dot close. Now that our file is closed, we can go ahead and because this condition was met and we've doing this whole process, we want to increase that number by, by one. So we can say data plus equals one, and now we know that our TV has been on for one more minute. But we have to now write that to our file so we can see that our TV has actually been on and it's logged now in that tracker. So to do that, we'll once again open the file. With our open, and we will connect that to my file equals open and we'll say TV log dot text this time we're going to open it in write mode and then we're going to write to it so we'll say my file and we'll say dot write and then we'll put the data we want to write into there so if we just do data like this, data was turned into an integer. You can't write an integer to a file. So we'll have to convert that to a string. And the way we do that is put it inside of str. So now our data will convert it to a string, which will then be able to be written to our file. And the last thing we have to then do is close our file out one last time. So now we'll go ahead and we can run this. And if we come back over here to look at our file, go ahead and refresh, we can see it's increased by one. We'll go ahead and run it again. And now it's at two. And just to confirm this, we'll go ahead and output this value here. And it's currently greater than 10, which would mean that this should all run, increasing it by 1. If we change this and make it, say, 25, 
I run it, I can see the number increases over here. But as I refresh it, it doesn't increase. So now we've written a part of our final program that's going to add to our log every time the power is at a level high enough to log that our TV or our screen or whatever you ultimately want to track is actually on. Thank you for joining us in this video. As mentioned earlier, our next video we're going to look at sending notifications via email.